Oh, is a weird game. There's not a single right or wrong way to play it and become better. As a result, it is very hard to give a player a concrete practice schedule or regimen to become the very best player. Everyone has their own habits while playing and their own focus of what they play. But behind every player improving, there is at least a silver lining of truth. And I hope to at least get you a little bit closer to what it takes to improve and get better at those. Now, everyone has probably asked or seen a question of the likes of How can I become better at streaming? Or How do I get more consistent? Or How do I get better at X? And if you've ever come across such a question, chances are you saw the immediate answer of Play more. It's the go-to answer, and because of the frequency it became a meme as well. But behind the obvious bantering and choking around, let's examine the idea of play more a little bit. Well, for starters, it's mostly a lazy answer, given to a lazy question. Asking something so vague, like how do I get better, will mostly get a vague answer, as in play more. Plus, nobody would be lying if it suggests you to actually play more to improve. It's the single most important truth when trying to get better at something. If you don't practice, you're not really going to get anywhere. Improving requires you to actually do something for it. Now, there's a saying which says, practice makes perfect, and I wouldn't really agree with that statement without a single doubt in my mind. I'd go for more of a perfect practice makes perfect philosophy. Because even while practicing, you can definitely make mistakes or base your practice on wrong assumptions, and thus might hinder your improvement. Then, uh, what is perfect practice? That is a good question which I cannot give a straight answer. As I said, there is no right or wrong way to play O's. It's more about some practice habits tend to make players hit a wall more often than not. And that isn't true for every player, obviously, but I'm going to have to talk vaguely about this, because there is no absolute truth just the majority of people tending to one side more than another. Approach rate scales linearly in difficulty and importance. That's the first assumption I'm gonna talk about. I've seen time and time again where newer players were focusing hard on the idea that approach rate 10 is some sort of end goal they really want to achieve and that from there on out they should only focus on it and all higher approach rates. It's easy to see where the misconception is coming from. Every single aspect of a beatmap is defined by a number, one way or another, with easy to understand difficulty progression. If we take uh, some examples, we can look at OD. If we compare OD1 to OD2, or OD3 to OD5, you'll notice a pattern. The higher you go with the overall difficulty of a map, the harder it is to accurately hit the notes easy to understand. Let's also take a look at circle size for example, same pattern here. Starting at circle size 1, which is pretty large, going all the way down, um, or well, up to CS7 and 8, and so on, it gets harder. Same is true for HP drain, star rating, BPM, well in the case of BPM it's a little bit situational, also star rating a bit, but uh, you, you get the gist of it. But when it comes to the approach rate, it's completely different. It's being represented in about the same number scale of 1 to 10, but the difficulty progression is a bit wonky. I've already talked about this in the reading discussion video, but I'll give a brief overview. The reading sweet spot for what a brain usually can handle without too much concentration is around approach rate 9 to 10 on your usual maps. Anything below 9 is viewed as a really hard to read, and anything above 10 is pretty fast and requires good reaction and some decently fast reading to play properly, hence practice. A lot of it. But if we try to apply the same pattern, compare approach rate 3 to approach rate 9, we'll see that almost every player would prefer approach rate 9 over 3 any day, if they want to perform the best they can, unless your name is Melhorov. Huh. It's definitely something people trip up on, their way of trying to linearly progress in O's. But it, it's not just this one thing why people are actually tripping up on it. There's a, there's a different aspect which also is a big influence. And that is observing top players practice. You see a lot of top players playing approach rate 10 and around. Some play approach rate 90T, 
or some high star rating normals, and notice a high approach rate. If you watch your favorite player play the game, you might notice them exclusively playing that kind of thing. But the important factor to look at here is that the approach rate is a tool. It's a tool for the mapper to make the map artificially more difficult or easier. A high density map, Camellia or boob sliders or whatever, something fancy, which is harder to read in essence, as you have to focus more on the rhythm, diversity, pattern diversity, etc., would usually be coupled with a higher approach rate to make it more comfortable to play. Or a really high BPM map would require a higher approach rate to get to the same density as a lower BPM map with a lower approach rate. In those cases, having a higher approach rate is absolutely justified. There was thought put into choosing the approach rate according to the map. Now, there are also a lot of unranked maps out there which feature multiple difficulties which only differ in approach rate. And that's good for practice. You can play a fairly easy to read map, something like a jump practice map, on, I don't know, 5.6 stars on approach rate 9.5 comfortably, but want to practice a bit of density, then just play the 9.0 approach rate difficulty. Or if you're feeling uncomfortable on higher approach rates, then play the map you can easily see on 9.0 and go for the approach at 10 difficulty. The problem starts when you exclusively play only the approach at 10 difficulties for the sake of playing the approach at 10 di uh, difficulties. Because it's harder than 9.0 and every top player you see in play is really high R, so you must too. But that is a misconception which doesn't take uh, the story, or rather history of a play into account. Every player started somewhere and worked their way up. You currently only see the result of their practice, trying to achieve even greater heights after having good fundamentals. And those good fundamentals didn't just come from playing Approach 10 since the first day they started playing the game. To summarize the points quickly, don't see high approach rate as the end-all be-all for reading business. If you can't have about the same performance on like Approach 9.3 as you do on 10, you might have a problem. I have to admit, though, that part about approach rate has become a bit longer than I intended it to. But I feel like it's fair, as it's the most common misconception I've seen when new people ask me about their issues and uh, the walls they're facing. Point number two I would like to make is uh, one that actually ties into an argument I used for the approach rate scaling for the previous one. Don't copy the exact same practice regimen from a top player if you are nowhere near his skill level. A top player mostly knows what he has to play to improve, and does so, well, or not if he's lazy and just wants to enjoy a game. But mostly top players have a good idea what they should be playing when they want to get better. Whatever a top player is playing might not be working out for you on a lower skill level. Let's be honest, spamming 8 to 9 star maps, as Kukizi does, will not immediately rescue you from being stuck in 4 digits. The same if you spam 250 BPM death streams when you can't even hold 180 for a few seconds. As I said, you pretty much are seeing the result of their practice, not the year-long journey they had before that, unless your name is Pacemaker. Copying exact grips, playstyle elements such as skins, starting to play at 4am because Kukizi says it's the best time to play for him, etc. are all to be taken with a grain of salt. Surely you can benefit from whatever what another player is using and has experienced over the years, but overthinking what exactly it is about the script which makes his aim good is in my opinion the wrong approach. Even if you end up copying the exact same setup of another player, you still are missing hours and hours of practice and the same fundamental skill and understanding a good player has. Now I could probably go on and on about these things, but I'll save that for another time. For now I'll put some closure with my personal opinion on practice, because we still haven't really gotten any answer and at least I'm gonna leave you with an unsatisfactory answer. Actually, hold that thought for a second. There is something important which has to be said beforehand. There are multiple ways to approach the game. Each has their own merits. You could divide the game up to all its aspects and practice them individually, be consciously aware of it at all times, or just play seeking hard songs and practicing those hard songs until you can play them. 
Wolf does whatever he wants, Kukizi just wants to play hard maps, Rafis and Rurouchi play a lot and practice really hard. The common factor between all those players is that they practice disciplined and want to get better. Even when Wolf plays all maps from 2007 and beyond, he's still trying to become better while doing so. There are so many different mindsets which end up shaping each and every player, but that is a tale for another time. Let's get back on track to my own answer. If you want to get better, practice absolutely everything you're shit at. You can't play hard work at all, time to practice and play it. Getting uncomfortable or just downright nervous on holding your seats? Well, start playing those juicy 7 minute long marathon maps. You're not playing to improve in the same session, you're playing to improve in the future, don't forget that. Also, a balanced practice routine is the best one to improve as a player, in my opinion. Look at aspects, different mappers, different O's map stars, see what you can and can't do, practice what you can't until you can, and practice what you can until perfection. Keep on going, and don't stop at like 5 star jump maps because you can have seen them quite frequently. 6 stars and higher is the next stop. And don't become complacent, or ask yourself questions. Just because you're fast, doesn't mean you're good. Did you forget 160 VPM streaming? Can you keep rhythm on slower maps? Can you alternate technical maps? And so on, a lot of intricate things other maps can teach you about uh, other aspects, uh, which uh, are pretty invaluable. That's why it's so important for me at least to be a well-rounded player and to just practice all aspects together. Unless you're obviously playing for fun. If that's the case, keep on doing what you're doing. Thanks for watching.